Hi and welcome back. Now in this chapter, we are going to be looking at ARM templates. That's Azure Resource Manager templates. So what are we going to learn? So what are ARM templates? And how to work with ARM templates for virtual machines. So an ARM template, an ARM template is nothing but a template that's written in JSON, that's JavaScript object notation. And this template basically contains the resources that you want to create in Azure. Once you have the template in place, you can then go ahead and submit this template onto Azure Resource Manager. Azure Resource Manager will then go ahead and create the resources based on the template definition. So the entire idea of these templates is basically you have infrastructure has code that can be used to deploy your resources in Azure. Now the different elements of the template are, so first you have the schema. So this describes the version of the template language that's being used. You then have the content version. This is the version of the template. So if you have different versions of your template, you can mention the version number in the content version section. You then have the resources section. This is the main section where you define the resources that need to be deployed as part of the template. You then have the parameter section. These are the values that can be provided to the template that can be used to customize the deployment of the resources. You also have the variable section. So these are values that can be used in the template. And then you have functions. These are user-defined functions that can be used in the template. And then you have the output section. These are values that are returned after the deployment. So let's go ahead and look at how we can basically work with ARM templates. Now, since from an exam perspective, it is important to understand ARM templates when it comes to virtual machines. Let's go through a sample template that I have that can be used to deploy a virtual machine. Now, please note there is obviously a lot that goes into the deployment of a virtual machine because remember, the virtual machine is dependent on other resources as well, such as your virtual network, a public IP address, etc. So let's go ahead on to the different parts of this JSON template that can be used to deploy resources in Azure. So first you have the schema. We then have the content version. So remember, if you have multiple versions of your template, we can go ahead and define that version number via the content version. Then you have the main section. So this is the resources section that basically define the resources that you're going to deploy in Azure via this template. We then define each resource one by one. So over here, we are going ahead and defining a Azure storage resource. So this particular block is actually going ahead and deploying a storage account in Azure. Now for each resource, you basically define what is the type. So this is a property. So what is the type of resource that you are going to deploy? So over here, we are using the Microsoft.Storage provider to mention that we are going to be deploying a storage account. We then mention the version of the API that's going to be used to deploy this resource. We give the name that we're going to assign to the storage account. We are going to give the location of the storage account. Please note in the subsequent chapters, I'm going to go through variables and parameters to show you how you can make this template more dynamic in nature. So over here, I'm specifying all static values. I want you first to understand what goes into the deployment of a virtual machine when it comes to ARM templates. And then later on, we'll see how to use variables and parameters. Now, this particular storage account resource is going to be used to basically store the disks for the virtual machine. So after the location, we mentioned the SKU, the kind that storage, and we don't have any property. So I'm trying to keep 
the creation of the storage account as simple as possible. Next, we go ahead and define the code for the creation of a public IP address. So this is of the type Microsoft.network. Here I'm giving the name for the public IP address and the same part, the location and for the properties I mentioned to assign a dynamic public IP address. Then I'm going in and defining another resource that is a network security group. Again, giving the name and the location. Now in the properties, we can actually mention the rules that we want to define as part of the network security group. So over here, I'm specifying an inbound rule for the destination port range of 3389. So this will allow me to remote desktop into the machine. Next, if I go down, we are now going ahead and defining the virtual network. Now over here, we are also mentioning a depends on clause. Now, since the network security group is basically mapped on to the network interface, Remember the network interface gets an IP address from the virtual network. So over here, we are saying that there is a dependency between the resources, the virtual network and the network security group. For the virtual network, here we are mentioning what should be the address space for the virtual network. And then we are saying that we have one subnet that will be defined as part of the virtual network. Over here, we are ensuring that we are referencing the network security group. Now the resource ID is a special function which can be used to reference or get the ID of the resource itself. So over here, you mentioned what is the type of resource and what is the name of the resource. Next, we have the network interface. So we give a name for the network interface. Again, there is a dependency on the public IP address and the virtual network. Over here, we are mentioning the IP config. We are saying that the private IP allocation is dynamic. Here we are mentioning the public IP address and the subnet for the IP configuration. Now, if you scroll down, now we come on to the virtual machine section. So here we give the name for the virtual machine, the location. Again, this virtual machine depends upon the, de the creation of the storage account and the network interface. Then we have the properties of the virtual machine. So we have the hardware profile. So here we mentioned what is the size of the virtual machine. In the OS profile, we give the computer name and what should be the username and password to log into the virtual machine. Then in the storage profile, we have now the image reference. So over here, we are saying what should be the underlying image that should be used to go ahead and create this virtual machine. We are saying to create the OS disk from the image itself. And here we are mentioning to attach one new data disk, which is of size 10 GB. And then finally, we're giving a reference to the network interface. So there's quite a lot that goes into the creation of a virtual machine. Now let's see how we can actually use this template. So let me go ahead and select all of the content. Now we can deploy the ARM template in the Azure portal via PowerShell or even by the Azure command line interface. So let me show you how to deploy it within Azure portal. So let me go ahead and search for template. So here we can use a template deployment. We can hit on create. Now over here, you can go ahead and choose common templates. So here there are templates to go ahead and create a Linux virtual machine, a Windows virtual machine, a web application, or a SQL database. So when you actually go ahead and choose any of these templates, so you're directly presented with the last screen wherein it goes to the deployment of the template itself. If you go ahead and edit the template, so here you will see all the data that's pertinent to the template. So if you want to go ahead and learn how to create templates for the different resources in Azure, then this is the best way. You can first use the inbuilt templates to understand how to construct the template itself that can be used for the deployment of the resources. Now, what we can do is that we can go back onto custom templates. I can hit on create. We can say build our own template in the editor. 
And even when you're building your own template in the editor itself, in the resource section, you can go ahead and add a resource. And here again, you can choose resources. So if I choose a storage account, if I just give a name for the storage account, click on okay, just giving a quick reference. So here it will add the content that's required to go ahead and deploy the storage account via a template. I can just go ahead and remove all of this and now attach the code which we have for the deployment of our virtual machine. You will see automatically it has gone ahead and understood what are the resources that we want to deploy. So a storage account, an IP address, a network security group, a virtual network, a network interface, and finally the virtual machine. We can go ahead and click on save. Now in the next screen, we choose our subscription and the resource group. We can go ahead and agree to the terms and conditions and then click on purchase. So now we are doing a deployment of all of these resources via a template, via code using the template deployment method. So now this template is being deployed onto the resource group. Let's come back once template deployment is complete. Now, once a deployment is complete, so you can see your template has been deployed. If I now go on to all resources, so here you can see all of my resources in place. So I have my IP address, my virtual network, my network interface, my network security group, my storage account, my virtual machine, and both of my disk, my OS level disk, and my data disk. So instead of actually going through a wizard to create the virtual machine, here we've just gone ahead and submitted our template onto Azure Resource Manager. Now, please note that if I go on to the resource group, so if you have an existing virtual machine, you can actually go on to export template for the resource group and you will actually be able to export the entire template that could be used to create the resources that are part of the resource group. So if you have, so if you've not deployed a virtual machine via a template, you can still use a template that's available for the resources in the resource group. So by default, every resource will have some sort of template attached that will be used for its deployment. Right, so this marks the end of this chapter, wherein we have looked at the initial deployment of virtual machines via resource manager templates. For more details, check the link in the description. Learn with Wits Labs. Success certified.